Hello and welcome to a very special conversation with a very special guest, Ravi Shastri, chief coach of the Indian team, which goes to England in a few days' time to play in the World Cup. Perhaps the most important assignment you've had, Ravi, in your tenure as a coach. But first things first, where have you been in the last five, six weeks? Uh, have you been watching the IPL matches in disguise or, you know, nobody seems to have seen you? I've been watching the matches, obviously, on television, but otherwise there's one word, chillaxing. Chillaxing. So you've been spending time with family and your dogs. Chillaxing. Etc. There's been travel as well, you know, for some other commitments, but otherwise pretty chilled out. When the team selection happened, were you involved in something? I know you've said in the past that it's not your job, that's the selector's job, but inputs, points of view, perspectives. I mean, that you have a chat with the captain, but like I said before, we don't get involved, you know, in the selection. What's the point in getting involved? You don't have a vote, you know, so... You know, why go there and, uh, you know, just tom-tom away about anything. Selectors have a job to do and uh, they picked us 15, now it's my job with the team management. Are you happy with the 15? Yeah, it's an Indian team and we'll go out then play to win. It's a good, strong side. Okay, so I, you know, I don't want to throw in caveats, but for instance, now there is the injury to Kedar Jadhav, which happened during the IPL and there is... In a sense, the poor form of Kuldeep Yadav because he didn't play all the matches for his, uh, for his franchise. Is that something that bothers you, some, some kind of worry? It uh, worries me at all. You know, in fact, I'm totally blanked out from that. When the flight takes off, takes off on the 22nd, we'll see who are the 15 on that. Yeah, and just take it from there. But you would, I might just to kind of read between the lines, you would want every of those 15 players to be 100% fit. Ideally. Ideally. You're playing a World Cup. You're not playing a Mickey Mouse tournament. I mean, the squad is 15, number, you know, 15 numbers or 15 players for the World Cup. But is there a case for 16 players? I know somewhere you mentioned that perhaps... I'm a strong believer in that. Uh, and why? Strong, because of the volume of cricket. Yeah. I mean, you have three formats of the game now. At full steam. You have domestic leagues around the world of T20 cricket. Look at the volume of cricket as compared to what it is today, what it was even five years ago. It's... You are on the road all the time. This is a 45-day event, the World Cup. It's not a two-week event. And it's one game after the other, bang, bang, bang. Three days off, match. Three days off, match. Three days off, match. And if you play well, good. Otherwise, on your bike. So, 15 players, they're bound to be niggles. They're bound to be injuries. So, you know, instead of waiting, calling for a replacement, you know, it's, it's not that England's close to India. Or for that matter, close to other countries of the world. You know, so 16 would have, I mean, would have been absolutely fair. Even if ICC didn't want to pay for it, the local boards could have paid for it. But there's a corollary to this, that you were part of the technical committee of the ICC, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et was this ever mooted? Was this considered? I mean, I, I was there about three, four years ago. Yes. Probably didn't think the need at that time. At that point in time. Neither was it raised by any of the teams. Yeah. I definitely feel it's... Uh, it's a clear-cut case now for a big event. Yeah. I'm not talking of a bilateral series. Because there the respective boards will do what... If this was a bilateral series, we would have had 60. For sure. So the cut-off date for the, for the teams is actually... For the selection of the teams is 22nd. Mm -hmm. You know, England have delayed their announcement of their team. Mm -hmm. uh, West Indies did it till very late. Is there a possibility that something could change in the Indian context? Why not? Because there are still matches going on, you know, injuries is the worst thing. Australia lost one of their fast bowlers, yes. you know, so anything can happen anytime, but depends on well, the seriousness. Ramada, for instance, is... Yeah. Uh, it, uh, depends on the seriousness of the injury, you know. They're like, luckily in Kedar's case, you, you know, you mentioned he's... Uh, there's no hairline, there's no fracture. There's no fracture. So, you know, we'll wait and watch, there's still time, so it should be okay, you know. Just, a, you know, kind of a... just to explore this... IPL form, does it really matter? Because at the start of the tournament, Virat, even uh, Rohit mentioned that, you know, one can't compare ODI form to... You cannot. You cannot. But if you are in good space, you'll take it. Yeah. Why won't you take it? You know, if now, if you're in, in the last, say, week, 10 days of the IPL, boys who are part of the World Cup squad, you know, say Rohit or uh, Virat or anyone, you know, is part of the squad there, goes big get some big scores, you know, yeah, that, that'll only help them going into the, uh, the World Cup because they come in that frame of mind that they're in good nick. 
But should that be a basis for selection or no? Not really. Not really. Because it's 2020 and 50 over cricket, totally different. Okay. What's your overview of the World Cup when you're looking ahead to what the World Cup is, you know, kind of holds out for all the teams? I think the standard of cricket has improved since the 2015 World Cup. And uh, when, I, when I say standard of cricket, means it's more competitive. You know, earlier in 2015, you might have had four or five teams that would threaten. Now you have more teams, you know, that could beat any side on a given day. So, for the viewer, for the spectator, it's going to be a, a terrific World Cup. And uh, even for the teams, you know, competing, you can't drop your guard. You know, you, you drop your guard and uh, you'll be in for a shock or even a surprise, yeah. So, you've played, as when you were a player, you played in both the formats. You played when there were pools in 83, 87, two, two different groups. And in 91, 92, we had the league format like it is now. Is there any difference in the approach that the team can adopt? Not really. I mean, you go with the flow. These big tournaments, I believe, you don't plan. You know, too much ahead. You go with the flow, you react spontaneously, you know, to different situations. And... Uh, the five years that have, four years that have gone in between World Cups, you know, that's what's prepared teams. You know, in those four years, they're preparing for occasions like this. You know, you can't pre-plan because, you know, the, the game is such, you've got to be able to react in the best possible way at that particular time to that situation. So, there's no point planning, you know, for something that isn't there. When it's there, you've got to be ready. And that's what these four years in between World Cups have prepared teams for. What about, I just wanted to focus a few, a little bit on some of the teams that are playing, or all the teams that are playing. So, for instance, the West Indies, you know, now everybody says they could be really the X factor because till about three months back, it seemed that they were, if you go by the rankings, they're pretty much, you know, at the bottom end. And they've come back strongly through a, a player like Andre Russell, Chris Gale playing. Is that something that, you know, you're conscious about and you're looking at what's going to happen? When they were in India, I said that. You know, I said, don't, you know, we might have beaten them, but it was a tough series. And they played some excellent cricket. And I said at that given time, there was no Gale, there was no Russell in that side. I said, watch out for this side. You know, they've got serious talent. And I was very happy for that. Because, you know, you played in the glory days of the West Indies against, you know, some of the best players that have ever played the game. And then the country has gone through a real debacle. And then to come back now, you know, you can see the one, two World Cups in the 2020 format. They've got some terrific talent in the one-day game. You know, the power hitting. There's no team that comes close. When it comes to sheer ability to hit sixes, <laughs> they're, they're way up in the ladder there. The, approaching the World Cup, even Australia seems to have suddenly, you know, emerged as a very strong team. They went through a roller coaster ride. Some of their key players were terribly out of form. And of course, two of them were banned mm -hmm. for a year. Uh, Steve Smith and David Warner. They are back. Mm -hmm. They're the defending champions. And they're looking fairly confident. You would expect that from Australia. You know, they're, they're defending champions. They've won uh, in the last, I would say, 25 years more World Cups than any other team. So, you would always, and there's never an Australian team that's not competitive. And now they've got, you know, all their players back and uh, they seem to be in pretty good form. But then again, in the World Cup, it's that given day, you know, which team reacts better to pressure and to situations. You know, so we know Australia is good. We know other teams are good, but we know we are good too. You've got very rich experience of playing in England, you know, as a, you know, as a county professional, of course, some of the tours that you've been there. So, what are the challenges? I mean, the big grounds, the weather, these are factors that everybody believes will be very influential uh, when the matches are concerned. Do you think that's… It can, yeah, 100%, because uh, in England, weather conditions play a, a huge part. You know, on a, the sun is, you know, out early, 10 o'clock. You know, and it's a, it's a good forecast for the day you'd want to bat first. But yet again, on a given day, you wake up at, in Leeds and it's overcast and cloudy. And the last thing you would want to do is bat first there, you know, for a 10, 10, 10, 10, 30 start. The ball could swing, you know, for the first couple of hours. So, you know, those are the things you got to look to. But uh, when you look at ICC tournaments, the surface in general, they're good batting surfaces. But the difference between England, playing a World Cup in England and any other any other place in the world is overhead conditions. So, conditions is something out of your control. Absolutely. But the, the itinerary you've got, your first four matches are against South Africa, Australia, New Zealand and Pakistan. That's a heck of a tough draw. Yeah, 
yeah, I mean, you, you expect that in World Cup cricket. You know, you, I mean, whichever way you look at it, you know, I believe every match is tough and take it one game at a time and go with the flow. You know, I look at it the other way. If you start off well, then you get tremendous momentum. So, you know, look at it in that fashion. So, that makes it imperative to start well because… Yeah. You, if, in any World Cup tournament, it's important that you start well. Are you looking… What are the issues that you are looking to resolve if there are any in the practice games? I don't think there's anything to resolve. You know, it's just, you know, soaking in the atmosphere, you know, believing in the combinations that we will plan and decide, you know, going into those practice games as a lead-up to the World Cup and uh, believe in that. There was so much talk on the number four slot at the time of the selection. Uh, do you think that, that there's a question mark, mark which still exists on that spot? I don't think so because that, for me, we are a flexible team. You know, and uh, it's horses for courses. You know, we've got enough ammunition there for enough players who can bat it for. So, you know, I'm not really worried about that. So, I'm, I must ask you this. The return of Rahul and uh, Pandya, you know, they were in a bit of a spot. Uh, they've come back. They've come back strongly. In fact, their IPL form has been very encouraging. So, how do you see that? See, you learn from, you learn, learn from your mistakes. You learn from adversities. And I said at that given moment of time, they'll come back tougher, stronger and wiser. And I can see that with both of them. Where the composition of the team is concerned, yes, you know, selectors have to do their job, etc., etc. There are three fast bowlers, main, and you've got Hardik Pandya as the fourth option. But conventional wisdom says maybe you should have had an extra fast bowler in England hmm. rather than an extra spinner. Hmm. Do you, how do you see that no, situation? I think we've got all... Uh, Bases covered really, and uh, last thing you want is passengers. You know on the tour. You want to have in those fifteen players a player who can play any time, at any given time. He shouldn't be in the fifteen, and could be called upon only if there's an injury. You know here if you, if there is a major injury to a fast bowler, you know there's, there's there'll be a replacement almost straight away. In fact, we're going with three, four fast bowlers in the lead up to the World Cup. You know, and uh, for all you know, one might stay back. You know, whoever is impressive, you know, the board might just keep him back and see what happens. The run-in or the lead-in to the World Cup, of course, the IPL has intervened and it's a long tournament. But before that, actually, the Indian team's performances or the results seem to kind of plateau and then dip a little. Is that or is that too much in the past, nothing too to be read in into it? Why don't you go look at the first 11 months? Why do you want to talk of the last week? You know, I would have been worried if it, the first 11 months was just downhill and then you wake up one week before and then suddenly you say, Are you, our Indian team is peaking. <laughs> no ways. I mean, look, look at consistency over the year. And you know, it's mental fatigue. You're playing the same opposition again and again. You know, you, it, it's bound to take its toll on the players. You know, I, I know for clear, the, the last day that the season was over, I could just see the faces in the dressing room. I said, get the hell out of here. You know, that was the, that was the feeling. We'd been on the road that long. So get the hell out of here. Ravi, I just need to understand or get an idea of your coaching mantra. What is, I mean, are you one of those number crunching guys who relies a lot on the statisticians? Are you somebody who likes to read body language? How are you, are you, you know, a guy's guy in the dressing room? I think the guys who can explain this the best are the players. I have no style. You know, you, you just go there and do what you are comfortable with. You know, there's no explanation for that. You know, you, you, you mentioned a few things. It's a combination of all that. Plus, the experience you have. You know, having played the game, having, uh, you know, talked on the game, uh, having been a coach, you know, as well. You know, as a call it manager, director, coach, whatever. But, you know, it's, it's close to almost four decades now. So, you know, that experience does come in handy. And you've been past captain. So, the distance between the captain and the coach have to be in sync on the same page. And yet, there is a little bit of a distance. Do you think that that works? Because the guy on the field takes all the decisions. How Absolutely. do you, you keep... Captain is in total control on the field. Yeah, your, your job with your support staff is to get them in the best frame of mind. To be able to go out there and express themselves in the best possible manner. Because the last thing you want to take out by being, you know, 
too much of a theory master is taking the enjoyment of the game out of the game you know let, let the guy do what comes naturally to him that's the most important thing yes you know there will be certain guidelines there certain uh, tactical uh, you know areas where if a team is has talked about playing in a certain fashion then he might have to adhere to that you know but otherwise when enjoy yourself man how do you see virat's trajectory as a captain because you got him or you you been with him from the time he became captain mm-hmm. first in the test series against australia in 2014 and then of course subsequently in all well, the formats i mean and results speak for themselves i'm asking you because there has been some criticism about the fact that you know in the ipl he's not had the results to show but in test matches you're number 1 ODI is your number two, and you know it keeps fluctuating in T20. The difference between there. a domestic league and an international, you know, when you talk of Test cricket, that's the ultimate format of the game. And if you see the way he is involved in the last five years across all formats, you know, there's still room for improvement. Yeah. You know, he knows that he's only 30. He's got another, you know, the, barring any injuries, I would say seven, eight years easy. So you're bound, he's bound to mature. He's bound to evolve even further. and bound to get better you know but you can't take away what he's done so when you just look at the, the, the stats work. out there and against whom against where you know against which teams i don't have to add anything to that in my experience i've seen two kinds of captains those who really enjoy the job and the others who actually don't enjoy the job they're saddled and they, they look burdened all the time when they're on the field so you think Virat really loves this kind of a responsibility. I can see the job. passion. I can see the passion out there. Where you know when he's there, he's he's into it. You know, and uh, you know that what it does is it makes the other players, you know, wanting to be on the same page. Early a couple of years back, when we had spoken, you mentioned that you know you were handling handling two alpha males in the dressing room, which is Mahendra Singh Dhoni and Virat Kohli. Uh, i had some you know compunctions i don't know how this will kind of pan out but it seems to have panned out extremely well very well in my mind there was absolutely no doubt from the outset you know it was a doubt doubting thomas is on the outside you know who thought otherwise but if i'm going to be worried worried about them you know then i may as well do another job than this you know i was never ever in doubt about you know the two of them having the kind of respect they have for each other you know wanting to do a good job for each other you know because uh, in the first phase of my job you know ms was the captain the next uh, next half virat was the captain and i can see the commitment both had for each other when they played was uh, tremendous and does it really make for you know does it and it spreads down the ranks improves the dressing room dynamics Absolutely. and it spreads down the ranks you know because they all know how big a player he is msd everyone knows and you know they know what he's achieved in the game the stature that he has and uh, then to see the poise then to see the humility you know the his sheer presence there you know the composure he brings when he's out there batting or even keeping is something you've just got to you know watch and learn and try and emulate it's not going to come easy you know it's it's taken him years but you know he's he's an exception there what seems to kind of astound people from the outside is there's such different personalities completely different personalities and yet it it seems that they found common ground which is good you don't want all personalities to be the same in a team and you know all hell will break loose <laughs> you know but you need that kind of you know the passion from virat the calmness from ms you know and each player is different you know rohit could be different from shikhar you know kuldeep could be different from someone hardik could be different from everybody you know but you want that if you had you've been barring i think a 10 11 month period you've been in charge coach director whatever else for almost 5 years so what would be your self appraisal if you had to kind of look back at your i think extremely satisfied i mean if you had told me at the start of my term that this is where you're going to be you know 10 days before going for the world cup i'll say I'll take it any day i'll take it any day 
because you look across all formats, you know, look at where we were. You know, when you, when my coaching staff and myself took over this job, I think it was 765 or 766. And then to be in the, you know, 111 across all formats. I think we've reached number one in all formats at some stage or the other. But always be hanging in the 122 or, you know, 112, you know, all the time. What else can you ask from the boys? Any tinge of regret about the test results in South Africa and uh, in and, England? You know, because there was so much talk that we'll... That, 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 would, that, would, that would always be there. But the good thing is they learned from those mistakes and got it right in Australia. You know, when it mattered. You are at, currently at an inflection point, so to speak. You know, the World Cup is when your assignment after which your term ends or your tenure ends. Uh, are you interested in coaching further? Are you wanting to go back to broadcasting? Are you, you know, I mean... You could do My that. focus is on the World Cup yeah. and with this Indian cricket team. I am not going to think one day beyond. I am going to think and live in the present. As clear as that. Thank you very much, Ravi, for speaking to us. Thank you. Sure.